Thanks very much for watching. Joining us now is the Liberal Democrat Senator for New South Wales, running candidates all over the country, David Lionhelm. Senator, lovely to see you. Thank you very much. All right. Now, uh, here, of course, in conversations, Stuart Bocking from Radio 2 UE, my colleague at Sky News, none other than Janine Perrett, Troy Branson from the Australian newspaper. Um, and uh, sadly, because we don't have enough seats, Ross Cameron is just lurking, <laughs> standing by at any one moment here. Um, now, we're going to uh, hopefully have you at, uh, at that forum a little later in the week. That'll be fun, and I want the, the, the people to have their say and, and the rest of it. But what I've noticed about uh, this lovely ad you put out there today, about the Marlboro man, geez, didn't some of the lefties go nuts about that? Um, you know, the reason I'm so all in on your candidacy, and it's, look, you're one of 12, so people can vote whatever they want, but you know what? You're, gonna, you're not going to back in the smoking taxes. I like the posters out the front of the airports that say no taxes. Um, I love when you rattle the nanny state like this. Uh, what's been the most hysterical reaction to an ad like this? Well, I had one journalist ask me, did uh, Marlborough allow us to use their, their <laughs> image in the advertisement? Um, there was quite a bit of interest in why we didn't use the top one, because um, that was our first draft, uh, was, the, was the top one. The actual advertising agency said to us, we don't think that one will pass muster because it glamorises smoking. Oh. I that I didn't look very glamorous to me, but uh, there, you, there you are. <laughs> um, the... Um, the, the reactions are mostly anti-smoking, though. Uh, the negative reactions are mostly smoking. The people who get it, um, which it's not a pro-smoking advertisement. No, of course, course not. It's, it's about freedom of choice and, and particularly opposing tobacco taxing, uh, taxes. Um, but the people who mostly go after us on this issue assume that it's positive um, on smoking. And so they start talking about how many people have died and all the lung cancer stuff and all that kind of thing. We don't dispute that smoking is not good for you. Our argument is simply that if you're an adult, you can make your own choices. Everybody knows smoking's not good for you. Correct. And smokers are, I think, now probably the most persecuted minority in Australia. They get, they get taxed to hell. They're not allowed to smoke in increasing number of places. They're not doing anybody any harm these days. They're not puffing smoke in anyone's faces. So you can't claim that you're protecting anyone from, from ill health or something like that. It's all about disapproval. Now, you imagine if there were laws saying, well, you, you can't do what you do here because I disapprove of you. I'm going to tax the hell out of you because I disapprove of you, and let's suppose it was something else, not smoking. Yeah. Um, you know, imagine the outrage. Correct. And look, it's this thing. Look, as a smoker, I know that I'm shortening my own life. It's idiotic. It's ridiculous. But the idea that uh, you know, more money was raised by smoking taxes than the carbon tax when it existed, that's why this is my man. Um, Janine. Not to mention that smokers are going to keep the budget. It's <laughs> yeah. the only people the that are going is, to help it. It's one of the most regressive taxes as well in terms of who it hits the hardest, and we never hear about that. I want to ask the Senator a question, though. The Adler uh, Lever Action Shock Gun. There's been a moratorium uh, on sales that runs out in August, early August, after the election. Uh, despite what's happened in Orlando, the gun control debate in the US, there's been no discussion of the leaders on this. The reason it were, it's not for sale is because there was a deal done with you uh, over border control and there's now a review into it. I just want to know what is going to happen on that Adler um, shotgun and the fact that somebody like John Howard has said that he's not happy this is watering down Australia's very well regarded gun control laws. Well, you need a few facts okay. injected into the situation. <laughs> the only shotgun that this affected was the seven shot. The five shot lever action 12 gauge shotgun is perfectly legal, has been for ever. Um, so the, the five shots are coming in, they're selling in their thousands, people are buying them. The one that uh, was, was affected by the uh, prohibition that I negotiated with the government about was a seven shot. Now, it, it was ridiculous that seven shots is dangerous and five shots is safe. A silly, a silly idea. And not only that, you can actually buy an extension uh, magazine for the five shot and take it out to seven, I think, maybe even eight shots. So. The idea that you are achieving something constructive by prohibiting seven shots um, uh, while allowing in the five shots is ridiculous. It's just, it's just an insane idea. And the reason that I uh, got uh, cranky about it and took it up as an issue was because it was being pursued by the uh, agenda of the anti-gun brigade who think that they can take... It's like taking slices off a, off a salami. They can get a little bit this year and a little bit next year and a little bit the year after that, so that eventually we'll end up with, uh, with a gun prohibition. 
The comparison with, with America is not valid. Um, we should compare ourselves with countries like New Zealand or Switzerland or the Czech Republic. They are far more uh, indicative of what we can expect with either tighter or tougher gun control. America is way out by themselves. They're not, they're, their culture is different. They kill each other without guns far more than we kill our, each other with guns. It's, it's a different culture altogether. So, OK, but put very simply here, is that when that decision comes up again, mm -hmm. what is your position on that decision? Oh, yes, I, I, I will again oppose um, any, uh, um, any bans on the seven-shot Adler because the, the, what's the difference? I mean, okay. you can get a seven-shot or you can make a seven-shot Adler by, by sticking an extension magazine in a five-shot Adler. What's the point of doing it? OK, Troy? Uh, Senator, the, this double dissolution election, of course, is all about the ABCC bills and the registered organisations mm. bills. Uh, two, two quick questions in relation to that. Um, this issue's gone off the boil. Is it, is it being raised with you at all, the issue of industrial relations? The government aren't prosecuting their case on it. And secondly, well, although we don't have a crystal ball, is there a possibility, in your view, that the government won't have the numbers in a, in a joint sitting to pass these bills anyway? That's a very good question. And I must admit, I've been wondering about that myself. Why is it that the issue that the Prime Minister thought was so important that he said to the crossbench, if you don't pass the ABCC bill, we'll call a double dissolution. With, he, he purported to, to try to bluff the crossbench. I don't think he ever expected. They never even negotiated with, uh, with the crossbench about that. But that was the, the scenario he painted. Vote for the ABCC bill or you'll cop a double dissolution and you might lose your seat. It was so important at that point, and now we've not heard a whisper about it. Nobody's raising it on either side. I, I think it was, there was never any uh, seriousness about the ABCC bill. He wanted a double dissolution mm. right from the start. Now, why, I have no idea, because uh, the intention was to clear out the crossbench. Well, obviously, that's not going to happen. We'll get at least six and possibly up to 12 plus Xenophon on the crossbench as a result of the double dissolution. So that's not going to work. So I, I can't get the logic of it. Anyway, to, to answer your question, no, it hasn't been raised, it's not being raised, and my prediction, I'm no better at predicting election outcomes than you are, I don't think, but my prediction is he won't have the numbers for a, to win a joint sitting. I think he'll win by less than 10, and he'll need at least 10, given what I think the likely scenario is in the Senate, to have a majority at a joint sitting. All right, you've got to forgive me, I'm an appalling time manager, so we've got to get you back on Thursday. There's a full hour to answer questions and all the rest of it. Um, Stuart, no doubt we'll have you on the radio show in the next little while. I'm sorry to cut you off on time there, mate. But, Senator, all the best. Thanks for coming along. My pleasure. Appreciate it. People want to learn more, what's the website? L ldp.org.au. Anyhow, vote for Liberal Democrats uh, as well as anything else. Look, I, I want the government to be returned, that's fine, but I want this bloke in the Senate as well. Quick break, back with more here on Paul Murray Live.